time to get funked up, baby, in T.P. Coleon's Funk Zone. Funky music, entertainment, media, and more. But all things are funky. Can you dig it out? What's good, people? What's good? Family, what's good to the boogie, the bang, bang, what it do? This is T.P. Corleone. Once again, this is a new episode of The Funk Zone. Thanks for tuning in. Before we get deep into it, share the video, subscribe, like, and all that, because your support means a lot to me, just as much as it means to me that you are tuning in. So dig, um, today we have a great guest. I love when I have guests on here that um are involved in things that I, I'm not involved in. You know, I do music and things of that nature, DJ and things like that, but I do not know the first thing about making a film. So I'm going to learn a lot today. I'm going to learn a whole lot today with my man, Chicago filmmaker, Lawrence Lee Wallace. What's up, Lawrence? How you doing? I'm good. What's up, man? Good, good. Thanks for spending your time with me in the funk zone. Really, really appreciate that. You know, you could have been having me. Yes, no problem. No problem. You know, um, I've been checking out your recent work over the past few days. I'm very, very impressed. You know, I met you a few years ago, but now I'm up to speed on what's happening. So let's get our listeners, our viewers up to speed on what you do, what you are about and so forth and so on. So um, how long have you been making films? First of all, I would like to even know that myself. Oh man, I've been doing film for the better part of 20 years. 20 you know? years? Yeah. Okay, I don't know if it was that long. Yeah, no, okay. it's been that long, 20 years. Maybe, maybe even longer than that. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, my IMDb only goes back to like 2005 or something like that. But, mm -hmm. but I was actually doing stuff like way before then too. Okay. Well, then again, the quality of your work shows you're not an amateur. So I shouldn't be surprised, that, you know, I shouldn't be surprised when you think about that too. Though. What inspired you to actually get into filmmaking though? Uh, you know, with a lot of filmmakers, people that are, filmmakers now I started off as an actor well yeah I started off as a writer and then I got into acting and I was doing acting for a long time I had a really really short stint as a musician as a music producer really okay. and I, yeah yeah we, we were super short it super was short. I, I I sucked at it like a few months. <laughs> I, right right exactly yeah right. like you you blinked and my music career was over yeah, it was, no, it's okay, it's okay. yeah. music is hard man. music is hard yeah um I my, my you know I, I I have a lot of respect for musicians and people in the music industry because because that's that's a rough industry that's what they're saying me about yeah. filmmakers though I feel yeah, the same yeah. About you, you know yeah and you know um I you know, I was writing and I was, um, I went to started producing my own plays. And, you know, from there I started, you know, doing sketch comedy, you know, I was, I had a sketch comedy show called Urban Scenes. Now this was like back in the 90s. Really? Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. this is back in the night. So, you know, so older people who, you know, know me or remember me from back then, remember the, you know, the show because we, you know, did like a lot of shows all around Chicago and other places. And it was pretty popular. It was pretty popular. I um made the show into a DVD, into two DVDs, actually. You know, um, had wow, some pretty good success. Amazon. Yeah, it's on Amazon. Yeah, okay. they're both on Amazon. You know, they did they did pretty well, you know, back then. And um, and yeah, man, I just uh, you know, I just fell in love with that side of it with just you know directing and producing what i because that was my first like real you know experience behind the camera and actually directing and actually you know producing i did mostly everything myself you know because i didn't i didn't know what i was doing yeah <laughs> and, you know, so it was very much trial by fire 
But, um, you know, I, I, I got the hang of it. I decided I would go ahead and go to school uh, for it so I could really, you know, learn it. Uh, got a degree for it, got a bachelor's degree, you know, in film for it. Right. And and yeah, man, that that's just that's just what I've that's what I've been doing. That and that, that's you know what my my love is now is directing and producing. I I still will act. I I throw I do like a cameo and you know and my stuff every now and then. The whole you know Spike Lee, Quentin Tarantino cameo type of yeah. thing. Yeah. Give myself one line. Yes. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, but but my main thing is writing directing and producing now. Yeah. Okay. So when you said you were acting first, now, were you acting because you were trying to find a way into the industry to begin to direct and write or produce, or you were acting first because you just wanted to be an actor? Or No, no I just, you know, I just wanted to be an actor at first. Yeah. And, you know, once again, with like a lot of actors, you know, it, it comes a point where you just kind of get tired of waiting you know, on people to call you, you know, um, mm -hmm. you get tired of, you know, waiting on people on, on your phone to ring and, and you, you get tired of seeing parts go to other actors that you know that you're better than, yeah. you know, yeah. but it goes to other actors because they're, you know, in a relationship with a director or, you know, a relative yeah, of the know. producer, <laughs> you know, or something yeah. like that, you know, so it, it I, I, actually started directing books I, I already knew that I could write I knew I was a decent writer you know um so I I really just started you know directing and producing as a way to create avenues for myself as an actor exactly right you know mm -hmm. yeah but then once you know I did it and I saw that I was actually pretty decent at it I was like well yeah I might as well just keep going that's what's so, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That kind of reminds me, uh, makes me think of a statement I once heard Easy E mention in an interview, believe it or not, Easy E from mm. NWA. No, okay. One said that, um, he said, I never was the kind of guy mm. that was about auditioning and begging somebody to get me on their records. I always felt like I got to create my own opportunities. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and yeah. That's mm. what you did, so, you know? You know, so did. Mm -hmm. Right. If you don't want to hire me or you want to give it to your homie, your cousin, your girlfriend, right. your <laughs> hey, I'm making my own movies. I'm this yeah. star. It is, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yes, yeah. yes. That's yeah. right. I could yeah. feel that, man. I could feel mm -hmm. that. You know, I wonder was that the motivation to, for many other filmmakers who you see always having cameos of their own. Right, yeah. Who knows? Who knows? I could I could see that though. I could I, that. yeah, I definitely see that too. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what was your actual, I know you said your first film, uh, you did it all yourself before you went to school and everything, because that was your desire to do that. You, know, you wanted to get in, but what was that project? Is it um, out or did it ever become released or things? Like that? What was, I, tell me about just doing your first film. I'm curious about that. You know? Yeah, so um, the first film was called Urban Scenes. It's a sketch comedy show. So that's it was, was, okay. Right, yeah. It's, Urban Scenes was the Dave Chappelle show before there was a Dave Chappelle show. Okay. You know, okay. Um, yeah, just, you know, very funny, edgy. And, um, you know, then from there, I kind of went into this romantic comedy um, thing because that was really hot in like the early 2000s. You know what? I, that's you know. a good two. I feel <laughs> love those man from like Twy and all those. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Twy. You know, yeah. My wife, I'm cheating on my baby daddy. Oh, I love. I still love those movies. They <laughs> employed a lot of us though, right? A lot yeah, of, no. Yeah. That was yeah, the thing, man. That was. That yeah. Was that was. Thing. Yeah. We we were working. You know. I mean, I was inspired by Love Jones. I okay. did this film called um, If You Love Me. Mm. And it was in 2008. And that was the first film that I got into the film festivals. Oh, you know? really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the first film I got into um, different film festivals and um, did really well. And, it, and all, all of the films that I've done have been released are on um, Amazon okay. you know, for people to, you know, look at, download. But yeah, yeah, I just, um, you know, I started you know, back in the 90s and it's just been going on stuff ever since. I mean, I've, I've taken breaks yeah. you know, in between and then I've tried other things, but 
you know, when you have a patch of something, you always come back to it. So yes, yes, you know, yes, yes. You know, yes. Like like a uh, like an abusive relationship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can stay away. I I sleep on the couch for about a month. Right. Come back, be fresh again. <laughs> be lovely, lovely. That's how you do the business. I just like doing that. Right. Plus, I kind of like. I would think that's also good for the art and and kind of getting rid of writer's block and recharging and battery and all that yeah. to be a take yeah. part, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I always tell people, you know, don't ever quit. Just, you know, take a break, you know, step right. away from it for a little while, you know, put you focus go. on something else, you know, let yourself, you know, kind of recharge, let it, you know, let it miss you for a little bit yes. and then yes. go yeah. back. Yeah. I like how you say that, let it miss you. You don't miss it, let it miss you. Right. So you come back to it, you pet it real good, make it feel good and Thank bam, you. it. it comes a hit, you know what I'm right. saying? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many films would you say? Um, I you didn't have to give me an exact number unless you know, but what's the ballpark number of how many films you say you've actually produced? Or was that hard to even uh, uh, come up with a number for that? Um, produced? Or just released or produced, or how would you want to put it? You know? I mean, as far as produ I produced like, I want to say maybe like eight or nine directed okay. because I've, I've directed other people's projects too. I got you, I got you. Um, and I've co-produced, you know, on projects. So, I mean, like all together as like my film library, yes. I would say maybe like 12. Okay. Yeah. I can do that. And That's filming funny. and filming is not really, I mean, you can't do a film in a week, you know? No. Right. Yeah. Just for oh, those who don't know, that takes time. It's real yes. time to put a film together. Yes, yes, it yes it does. It's something that cannot be rushed. No. Right. Yeah. So it's about your company, your actual company that you have. Yeah, um, D Production Studios. That's a um, production company, uh, which I run with Angela Cobb. And um, I created that. Um, I created that early two thousands, and uh, Angela came in. Um, around 2013, 2014, when we both did um, the film Pieces of David. Okay. You know, with uh, Cinder Williams. Oh, yes. okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Mm, yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, and that that's also out, you know, on Amazon doing really well. And she's from and, Chicago yeah. also, right? Yeah, she is. Yeah. Yeah, for yeah. those who don't know, she was in, um, don't tell me Spike Lee's uh okay what is this spike leaves with this <laughs> more better blues right mo better blues right, right. Yeah, mo, yeah, yeah. Mo better okay. blues. all right chicago yeah. that's what i'm talking about okay. yeah yeah okay. yeah yeah she's great to work with great person and um yeah that was um yeah that was a um film that i did that was uh, 2008 with the company and we do like commercials um we do promo ads um we do consulting you really? know, for people yeah that are trying to do a film you know we'll we'll consult you know and um you know kind of help guide people through the process um editing you know we do editing yeah and um yeah we we really don't do music videos anymore okay um that's just you know that's just getting kind of messy with the music video <laughs> oh, yeah and by the way i'm just, kidding, like, just an artist or label yeah 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 like, yeah yeah with the artists yeah yeah with, yeah, the, yeah, with, yeah, with the artists yeah so we kind of so we stay away from doing music videos yeah. uh -huh. you know now but um yeah i mean and, and like live events too like concerts and plays interesting like you know we okay with those so yeah. Well, you hear that, people? If y'all need any editing, uh, filming of events, so forth, deep production, deep production studios, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. deep production studios. What I'm saying, check out and, and casting and casting for for really? other people's films. Yeah, mm -hmm. really. Okay, okay. The casting, find the talent for you. I definitely would trust you on your casting because I was checking out some of your work like earlier this weekend actors man you know not to um believe me this is not a diss to independent filmmakers and so forth but a lot of times when you hear of an independent film 
you expect, you know, the acting not to be that good, you know, yeah. bad editing, you did what I'm saying, um, yeah. bad camera shots, all that kind of thing. But mm -hmm. I don't see that in your work, man. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Not that I was there to critique, you know, but yeah, that no. stands out. You know, that mm -hmm. stands out when you see it, you know. Yeah. Even mm -hmm. just because the budget is low, even it, it doesn't have to be cheesy and shoddy. You know what I'm saying? Right. It so it yeah. shows you take time and care in, in your projects, you know, in your work that you do. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we we just we we just want our stuff to to look good, you know, um, because um, it's a it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. Okay. You know? And you know, if you you want to put out if 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 I'm asking for someone to pay for something that I created. You know, I want to deliver for them. You know, so, I, I want it to look good for them. If you know, mm -hmm. if you're gonna pay for my stuff, I want it to look good right. know, for you. And so, and yes. I'm I'm going to do everything that I can, you know, to make it, you know, look good, you know, for them to give them that escape because that's that's what it is. That's you know, that's why people you know look at you know watch films in the first place so they can get a so they can get an escape. They can you know, kind of check out of reality for a little while and be entertained. And that's, so that's what we're trying to do. My man, my man, well, you're doing a good job with that. You're definitely, Thank you. definitely Thank on the ball with that, you know. <laughs> so tell us about your most recent um, release. What's your most um, recent release? So the most recent uh, film that's out right is called To Your Last Death. Well, actually, two that came out around the same time as To Your Last Death and Pieces of David. Pieces of David, that's a dark comedy with um, Cinda, it's like Cinda Williams. Yeah, okay. Uh -huh. um, yeah, T.C. Rose, um, Anita Nicole Brown, um, Lakeisha B., Lakeisha Bonner. Oh, uh, yeah, and, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Quinita Bellows. Hmm. And, oh, and, and I can't forget the star of the film. <laughs> oh, you can't forget that. Right. <laughs> Do that, man. <laughs> Brian C. Green, who plays David. Name again. The name once again. Brian Green. Brian, Brian C. Green. Green. Okay, yes. I got you. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Out. yeah, and um, yeah, just um, it's it's a comedy. Um, very funny. We had a lot of fun filming it. Um, you know, it's it's something that's very it's it's very different, but it it is it's very entertaining. You know. It's on, like I said, it's on Amazon right now. I and it is, check it out. Yeah, it's 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 really wild. It's, it's a wild ride, you know. You'll really, be thoroughly, really? Right, you'll be thoroughly entertained, you know. All right, and you know, I like to laugh anyway. You know right, right, yeah. And also, um, on the more serious side is an animated feature film, which I have pleasure of being a co-executive producer on, Man. which was created by a couple of LA friends of mine. Jim Cyril and Tanya Klein okay. is called To Your Last Death. You know, and that one is starring the voices of William Shatner, uh, Ray Wise, and Marina Basarin, who was on Deadpool, the both of the Deadpool movies. She plays Deadpool's girlfriend, and she mm -hmm. was also in um the television series Gotham. Well, she was Gotham's not on the air anymore, but she oh, was on the television she series. Playing Gotham. Gotham. Yeah, she was um, she was a wife of Lieutenant Gordon. Okay, okay. Right. Is she a brunette? The brunette? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really? Okay. Because yeah. I didn't follow um the other movie you were speaking of. Um, Deadpool. Deadpool. Okay. I didn't really follow Deadpool, mm -hmm. but Gotham is my show. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So she's so yeah, her, her voice is in your. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, her voice. Yep. Yeah, her voice is in it. I mean, um, William, William Shatner from Star Trek. Everybody knows really, from Star yes, Trek. Yes. I, right, I, I yeah. didn't go past me. I was going to go back yeah. to the okay. <laughs> list is in the house. Right. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Go ahead, Lawrence. Go uh, yeah. ahead. And and that is an animated um, science fiction horror film. Really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. it's out right now. It's very it's, new. It's right, uh, right on multiple um, platforms. You can see okay. it on Amazon, mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, other platforms. It's um, yeah. It's it's a very exciting, you know, uh, gory, you know, horror sci-fi. Oh, I'm gonna know, do that tonight. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's what's yeah. up, man. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for telling me about that. And yeah, won all types of awards and film festivals. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, Ooh, it's good. Man, so you are just man winning awards and into mm -hmm. the you so that leads actually to the question I always wanted to ask you as well. Do you have any aspirations or do you see yourself working in Hollywood? Well, actually you kind of got your feet wet a little bit anyway, working with people like Cindy Williams and having William Shatner. I'm sorry I forgot the actress's name already from Gotham on your recent project. Yeah, okay. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you you kind of gonna be messing with Hollywood probably on a more intimate basis somewhere in the future. Do you think so or what? You know? I, I mean, I mean I have, you know. <laughs> you know I'm I have sorry, excuse on, me. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I've I've worked on Hollywood for, I, I mean I've I've done stuff with Fox, with you know, with HBO, with Comedy Central, with BT in the past, you know. Okay. Um but um but yeah I mean it's you know like working working in Hollywood is just I, I don't look at it as working in Hollywood. I, I look at it as just you know working in your craft, just just working. I love you know, just that. doing just doing film. You know, you're just you know you're just doing film. And you know I I think that um you know the reason why like so many people don't you know make it or or, or aren't you know, successful at it is because um, they adopt that Hollywood mentality or what they think the Hollywood mentality is, you know, and really, it's, it's really just a job. You know, it's really just a job you you and just like any other job you get out of it what you put into it, you know, so, you know, like I said, just you put your all into it. You you do what you need to do. You learn it. You you of course you you know like any other job you got to learn a craft. If you're trying to be a doctor, then you you learn, you know medicine. Yeah. You know. So if you're trying to do film, I mean you you gotta you you gotta learn film. <laughs> you know you you have to learn you know, how to do it. You gotta yeah you know you you got to experience and and that you know it might require going to, to school. Not always. You know, I don't think it's 100% necessary to go to school, you know, but I mean, I, I think that you you need to do what you need to do, you know, to educate yourself, you know, on it. And if that, that may mean working for free, you know, on other people's sets to get the, the experience and to learn. Yes. Right. Yeah. 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 And to learn. I, I did all of those things. I, I worked for free. You know, I went to school and I got a degree, you know, and I learned. You know, I, I paid attention, you know, and I and I learned and I listened to people, you know, to other people that knew more about it, you know, and took their advice and asked for help, you know, and and, and I still do all of those things today. So, okay. so yeah, I mean, you, you know, it's just, you know, a, approach it as, you know, as your business, you know, yes. as, as your business that, you know, you're that you're in charge of, you know, if you're an actor, it's your business, it's, it's you, you're trying to sell yourself, same as you're a director, you're making films, that's your business, you're trying to sell your films, you know, that's how you have to approach it with the same type of energy and dedication that you would a regular nine to five, because yeah. it, it is a nine to five, it is absolutely a nine to five, yeah, yeah but, but it's yours, right. So the only uh, that's how you have that to you'll get out of it is what you put in if you wanted to. Right, yeah, yeah. And, you know, and, and like chill with the whole idea of partying and, you know, because like everybody lives for the party, everybody lives for the premiere. You know, I could really give less than a damn about a premiere. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, everybody is, you know, what wants to party, but nobody wants to put in the work. You know, I, I, I was like, I've, I've worked with people in the past and we, we, we haven't even filmed one lick of footage and they're already talking about where they're going to have the premiere party at and it's like <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah yes you know i don't know yeah. that, that's the glitter side that's the glitter yeah side, yeah, yeah, know, yeah 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 that's the glitter like, side that'll see. that'll come right yeah that that's all they see and, and mm -hmm. while all that's attractive that's yeah. not getting you paid exactly <laughs> exactly actually that costs money you know what i'm saying you see right you know I mean? exactly. yes yes yeah. I got you, man. You know what? How it's funny you would say that. So when I was looking for some um, a pick to use for the um, thumbnail of the video on your, I got a nice one from from your page. You know, oh, cool. I was like, man, 
this dude, he all about business because I don't see him turning up nowhere in these space. I'm turning <laughs> right. crazy. I said, Lawrence is about his business, man. He don't, right. he don't turn up now once, do he? You know what I'm saying? Okay, but it's all business, though. But hey, but hey, you work it. You know party, though. Man. I, I know how to party, though. I know how to party. I, you, know how, I, you know how to party yeah, when it's time. When it's time, party. right? When it's time. And that way, exactly. to me, I always feel like when you party after your work is done, after your T's are crossed, your I's are dotted, and the money is in the bank, whatever, then you could party hard as hell. Exactly. You know, you could just let loose, let your hair down, do mm -hmm. everything, and you, and you get the most out of your turning up then, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But if you turn it up, you still got food on the stove, you got to be at work, you know, in six hours, that kind of right. thing, and your yep. project ain't done, you got emails you got to respond to. No, man, get your ass on my hand with your business first. Man. Right. That's how, that's how I look at right. it, you know, because right. when I party, I want to do it for real, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. Exactly, that's right. So yeah. check this out. Um. So you said your films are on the main, the main, well, mainly the things we spoke of right now are on Amazon. So when you say Amazon, are you saying on Amazon for sale, the site, or Amazon Prime, the stream? Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime. Sure. Okay. Yeah. We should have got that clear. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. are any of your um, so your releases and your productions and so forth are they like for sale or are they just mainly for sale? They're for sale. They're for sale. Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. you can, you, you know, you can rent them, you know, video on demand. On Amazon. Do that too. Okay, mm -hmm. so I ain't gonna hold you too long, but because you are a filmmaker and I gotta make you the not the scapegoat, but you gotta represent all filmmakers for the next couple of questions. I'm gonna ask you since I don't have anybody else right now in front of me, I got you. Okay. I'm going to ask you, do you feel at all that um, you have any kind of social or moral responsibility as far as the type of films you put out, the messages and things like that? Or does that not matter or just does it matter a little bit? Or, or is it more of the art than anything else? How do you feel about that? You know, you know I, I, I don't know ask, you know. Yeah, I, I don't necessarily look at it as a responsibility. It's just, you know, I, I'm a I'm a black man, you know, living in America, you know, so I know what I want to see and what I don't want to see. Uh -huh. You know, so anything that I don't want to see, I'm not going to, you know, regurgitate that. You just know, that I'm not gonna be, yeah, I'm not gonna be, you know, a part of anything that, okay. you know, is gonna show, you know, black men, any type of black men in a bad light yeah. you know um i i think that there's a way to do everything tastefully mm -hmm. you know but i think you know there also it, it needs to be tasteful and it needs to be a reason behind it right you know I, i'll give you a quick example like the whole you know black men wearing you know a dress yeah you know um to each his own I mean, right. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it, mm -hmm. you know, um, but not because I think it's emasculating or anything like that. I think, you know, it, it's kind of a double standard, you know, when, when black act, male actors do it and white male actors do it because white male actors do it, they're praised for it. They get, they win awards, you know, like, you know, Patrick Swayze did when he did it and, Mrs. Doubtfire, you know, yes. Robert Williams, when he yes. did it, he, he won Academy Award for it. And Dustin yeah. Hoffman, he, Dustin Hoffman won the Academy Award for it. And the list goes on and on. Yeah, you know, on, on and on and on. The, the, that list goes on and they're praised for it and they're called brilliant, you know, but when a Black man does it, then, you know, people are kind of like, you know, oh, well, you know, you, you got to do that in order to you know, do anything else. It's emasculating and everything like that. I, I mean, and yeah, it can be depending on what it is. But I mean, I'm sorry, Wanda was funny. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Jamie Foxx yeah. doing Wanda was funny. You know, Martin uh, Lawrence doing Shanene, it, it was funny. Yeah. But, but it was a reason. It was part of comedy. You see what I'm saying? It, was, it, was, it was part of their comedic, mm -hmm. you know, you know, flair. Yeah. You know, it, as long as there's a reason for it, 
I don't have an issue with it. But no, I, I don't believe in doing anything gratuitously. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't do any, you know, doing anything for just a, a, a cheap laugh yeah. you know, or, or, or anything like that. It, it has to be some type of, you know, meaning behind it. For I me. got you. you know. Yeah, interesting, man. You, you put that in a whole perspective. I haven't seen it uh, or seen before as far as the men in dresses kind of things, male mm-hmm. actors in dresses, because um, just like you said, Mrs. Doubtfire, Robin Williams, you know, Patrick Swayze. You know, uh, yeah. Yeah. And then, I mean, and it's the same thing for guys playing drug dealers, that kind of, yeah, drug whatever addicts, is, yeah. you know, or, or, or prostitutes. Once again, yeah. you know, Julia Roberts, she won an award for Pretty Woman. She was a prostitute. Right. She was you a know, woman. I mean, <laughs> you know, yeah. I, so so it is definitely a, a double standard. But but once again, we have to control that narrative. Yeah, that's it. That's you know, that. I, I think the yeah. problem comes when others are writing these scripts and roles for right. you and if you feel uncomfortable don't do it you know but exactly it's cool, cool, exactly cool. that's what it is right. i think there is a certain amount of you can allow yourself to be punked out if this is in you but if right. you choose to do it and this ain't you then you yourself you know what i'm saying yeah yeah exactly yeah you know i mean i i get it i get that it's you know um, the roles, you know, for people of color are scarce, you know. Yeah, but, and then they have the demeaning yeah. roles. So I, I get that part. And I'm right, yeah. Is, you know, but, but I mean, you do you do. right, yeah, yeah. But but I mean, you know, at, at, at some point you have to take a stand. At some point you have to be yeah. like, you know, yeah, I know that I need money, but not at the expense of, of playing this character, you yeah. know. <laughs> Not, it, not not if it means that I have to portray this. Yes. You know? yes. So and, and 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 I think that people know. I think when you pick up that script and you read it, and it's, you know, I, I think if I think from reading it, you know, you can tell. Okay, this character is going somewhere more meaningful. Yes. By the end. Yes. Or okay. They just put this character in here to be a damn fool and a clown. Mm-hmm. You know, no, the, you, you can tell the difference. Yes, mm-hmm. yeah, you can. You can tell the difference, and you know, for the the latter, I I think that you know, you need to take a stand and say no, find mm-hmm. somebody else for this. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> right. Um, kind of related to that, I'm not going to stay on that topic, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. there was a movie that caught me by surprise. I saw early last year. I forget what channel it was on, but it was a drug dealer movie, an an Mm -hmm. independent movie, you know, put out by Mm -hmm. a a black person, an African American, Mm -hmm. you know, and the um, it was the plot. I mean, when you see the plot of the trailer, you know, this guy slinging dope all over the place. He has a uh, a sidekick that's a female that's an assassin. So I'm like, okay, let me watch this nice little gangster drug dealer movie once once again another black drug dealer movie, but it looked entertaining. Mm-hmm. But after it was over, man, I was shocked as hell because the whole drug dealing premise was just um, just a mask to tell a love story. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And at the end, the guy got out the game. You know, he him and his sidekick assassin chick they fell in love, whatever. You know, and um, they lived happily ever after. They had the white picket mm-hmm. fence with the house and everything, what I'm saying. So it wasn't mm-hmm. really glorifying that, but they know right. to draw a sin, they had to put a dude mm-hmm. slanging dope with a gun in his hand. You know what I'm saying? That I was like, that's how you do it. That's yeah. the, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, I mean, you great know, great love I, story, great love story. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. I, and yeah, and, and I mean, you know, there's there's entertainment for everyone. Yes. You yeah. know, yeah. And I mean, that that's the great thing about, you know, in, entertainment is that there is something, you know, for everybody. And, you know, um, stuff like that. Um, I actually was the cinematographer for a film that's coming out. Actually, I think later on this month, um, it was written and produced by Shatifa Carter. Um, she calls herself Queenie on Instagram. And she wrote it and she produced it. Um, excellent film. It's an urban soap soap opera. All right. You know, you know, and it's you know following the journey of of a young woman over over the years who you know 
it's a love story and she gets right. involved with you know a man who's a drug dealer and it shows a different side of you know of street life Mm-hmm. you know what I mean and it and it's very much for younger people yeah you know who who understand that type of world mm-hmm. you know and um yeah and it's an excellent film it's called circles so you know, like okay. I said right yeah like I said I, I I shot it on the DP and it'll be out um it should be out in a couple of weeks if you go to her Instagram like I said she's Queenie um something but her name is Shatifa Carter you can Google right. that too and it should come up but yeah the, the trailer is out and um cool. yeah, and, it, and it's good film, good film, very right, well, well right. written, you know. But but yeah, yeah, man. I mean, you know, th- there's in, in there's entertainment for everyone. There there is something for for everybody, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, you you. I think you just have to you know be intelligent enough and matured enough to to understand the difference between you know something that is meaningful that's taking the audience you know on a journey somewhere you know, and something where the directors and the producers, you know, don't know what the hell they're doing and yeah. are just throwing out stereotypes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I got you. My man, my man. Okay, uh, one more thing I wanted to hit you with. Um, who influenced you, if any? Are there any, like, directors or filmographers, filmographers, filmmakers. <laughs> hey, we're going to keep that filmographer, okay? We're right. Yeah, we're keep that <laughs> That's a new, a new right. Friday. Right. So are there any like, filmmakers <laughs> and producers and directors who have influenced you at all? I, I mean, so many, you know, I mean, I, you know, I love Spike Lee stuff. You know, you know, d- different, I get different things from different filmmakers, like, yeah. you know, with, with Spike Lee, um, I, I love how in his films, um, I love how he created the signature dolly shot, you know, with that, his innovation, you know, is, is what inspires me, just how innovative, you know, Spike Lee is with his mm-hmm. camera angles, mm-hmm. you know, he likes to use like wide angle lenses, mm-hmm. you know, for you know, single shots of an actor, which has been stolen, which I, I, I've seen, because like he, he was doing that back in the, you know, 90s. And now I'm seeing new filmmakers doing the same thing. I was like, that's yeah. Spike Lee's shot. They stole that from Spike yeah. Lee. <laughs> yeah. and I, I've used it too, because it's, okay. it's a dope yeah, shot. It's and I, yeah, yeah, it's a dope shot. You know, and then Quentin Tarantino, you know, for the for his dialogue, you know, uh, Quentin Tarantino, he he loves to do a lot of like really long he he likes to do a lot of like, kind of like storytelling mm-hmm. you know in his film not necessarily about the story that's happening but just conversations you know yeah. just conversations yes, mm-hmm. you know yeah and 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 i find that fascinating you mm. know you know and then you know then it's um uh, people you know like um, misha green you know um and her, you know, kind of genre bending, you know, techniques where she's <clears throat> will do a period piece that's set in the 50s, but then she has um like m- music from the 90s yeah. playing in the background, you know, <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? You know, stuff like that. So yeah, I, I I get inspiration from a lot of different sources. Cool. Okay, okay. Well, man, I'm going to wrap it up because I got a lot of things I want to just run off at the mouth about, but it don't have nothing to do with nothing, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, I really, really appreciate you coming on in the Funk Zone with me, man. Keep up the good work, man. You know, I learned some things about, I don't know, your films were acclaimed as they were also as far as award winning and and festivals and things like that. So you're the real deal, man. Thank you. You are the real (laughs) deal. And I've ran across some filmmakers in my um, travels over the past few years and some are doing okay some are having a hard time but I think you got the blueprint like you said just work yeah. love what you're doing mm-hmm. work what I'm getting from it um pay attention to detail that way you have pride in what you're selling yeah. you know what I mean so you can ask for whatever fee you feel this cost because you put mm-hmm. together a well um polished product when I'm saying so I mm-hmm. did that man I did anything Thank you, you want to say before you. I let you go 
Um, no, man. Um, thank you for having me on, man. This was um, great. It was a, a lot oh, of fun. Good. I appreciate it. <laughs> you that. It's all right. And, um, uh, uh, one more time, I know it's in the video, but the name of that um, horror <coughs> movie, that animated horror flick, science fiction flick, because I'm going to check it out like tonight. Uh, to Your Last Death. To Your Last Death. Okay. Yes. And this on Amazon Prime. Yeah. Okay, that's tonight. Okay, I yeah, get. It. Yeah, yeah. If you actually, if you go to um Amazon and in the search engine, if you type my name, my full name, Lawrence Lee Wallace, all of my the stuff that I'm really okay. pop up. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Okay. I <laughs> can, I got you. All right. Have a good weekend, brother. All right. Man, you too, to brother. Stay Thank in you. touch, bro. All right. You too. All right. You too, man, Lawrence. Peace, love. Yeah, all peace. right.